Hi, I'm Frederick, and my project is on triple fusion upconversion applied to solar cells. If you are a climate change denier, I suggest you stop watching now. Conventional solar cells are based on semiconductors, which have a band gap, an energy band where occupation is forbidden. Photons with energy greater than the band gap can be absorbed, generating charge carriers that diffuse through the material to be collected at selective contacts, producing electric current. But not all of the light energy turns to electricity. After photon absorption, excess energy above the band gap dissipates by carrier thermalization, while a photon with energy less than the band gap is not absorbed, so-called transmission loss. These two losses depend on the material's band gap and establish the theoretical Shockley-Kaiser limit around 30% for crystalline silicon. Proposed solutions to reach efficiencies up to 50% are down and up conversion. While down conversion aims to reduce thermalization losses, up conversion aims to reduce transmission losses, transforming two low energy photons transmitted through the cell into one high energy photon, which is absorbed back in the cell. Before we go further, some molecular physics. Electrons have spin of one half, up or down. In a molecule, two electrons with opposite spins reside in the highest occupied molecular orbital, giving a singlet with total spin zero. When excited, an electron is raised to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, and now the spins may be opposite, giving a singlet, or paired, giving a triplet, with total spin one. Generally, photon absorption is from the singlet ground state S0 to an excited state, for example S1. Fluorescence is the inverse process when the excited state radiates back to the ground state. A singlet can also become a triplet by flipping a spin in a process called intersystem crossing. This is usually forbidden, but the rate can be enhanced yielding high triplet population. On the other hand, a low intersystem crossing together with the spin prohibition of direct relaxation down to ground state, give triplets long lifetimes, which is useful to store energy. Now back to triplet fusion. Low energy photons are absorbed in a sensitizer molecule, exciting a singlet state that quickly converts to a triplet. This is then transferred into a resonant triplet state of the neighboring emitter molecule. It diffuses in the medium until it meets another similar triplet and both annihilate, generating a single state of twice their energy. This is the energy and spin conserving process. The final singlet must be near or above band gap energy for its photon to be absorbed back in the cell. So what is the project about? For up conversion to work efficiently, photo excitations must meet one another within their lifetimes. Hence, the photo excited state must be mobile, diffusing through the whole absorbing material before decaying. This is difficult to achieve in organic sensitizers, which have low diffusion lengths. We aim to replace these conventional sensitizers with something closer to a semiconductor, which have much larger diffusion lengths. And further, improve this diffusion by an energy gradient that funnels the energy to a common reaction center. Messel ammonium lead halide perovskite is an ideal material for prototyping this new design. And then, on top of the perovskite, we will deposit our emitter, a small molecule acceptor like BPA or rubberine, with either sprinting, spin coating or thermal evaporation. The structural properties of the two materials and the important interface will be controlled using scanning electron microscopy, atomic force microscopy and X-ray diffraction. And what about this interface? Between the perovskite sensitizer and the organic emitter, we have a natural interface. Our main focus is to transfer excitation energy across it. For that, we need the right energy level alignment between the semiconductor bands and the organic orbitals, which we determine with photoelectron spectroscopy. To understand if the transfer really happens, we will track the excited state dynamics after photoexcitation with time-resolved photoluminescence and transit absorption spectroscopy. And finally, by tuning the perovskite band gap, the emitter triplet level, interface dopants, and the energy gradient, we aim to explore the parameters for high efficiency upconversion under low excitation conditions. Successfully employing perovskite for this purpose 
will be a relevant step for further improvement in photovoltaics.